Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. It's Jacob here and this video's topic covers the types of rotor systems. Now after multiple people posted questions about rotor system design, I decided to make a video to hopefully help clarify any kind of questions on the subject. So let's get started. For this video, I'll be covering three types of rotor systems. The first one being a rigid system. Next one being the semi-rigid system. And lastly, we'll cover the fully articulated rotor system. Now each one's slightly different, but more so just kind of building off of each other. Now, in the beginning of modern day helicopters, the first few designs had rigid rotor systems. These were simple in design and quite literally rigid when it came to the blades, the hub, and the mast. So let's see what that looked like. We had the mast attached to the hub, and quite simply the blades just coming off of that. Like I said, very simple uh, system. The only motion was just the rotation of the blades and the feathering of the blades. Now, as we already know from uh, our uh, compensation of dissymmetry of lift, the blades must flap in addition to feathering to compensate for that dissymmetry of lift. If you have any questions of that on that, I would recommend watching that video. I'll put the link in the description as well as should pop up in the video above. Um, but in this system, the stresses of aerodynamic forces were actually absorbed solely by the blades. The blades were flapping up and down. Um, and also during this time, airfoils were made of very lightweight metals like aluminum. So you can only imagine if uh, we have lightweight metals like aluminum flexing up and down, up and down, up and down, kind of like a tin can, it starts to weaken uh, the metal over time. So engineers needed to find something better, uh, something more survivable because these blades were just wearing out. But in summary, rigid rotor system, rigidly made, simple in design, and offered the ability for feathering of the blades. Now, it wasn't long until a solution was found for increasing this rotor survivability, and a semi-rigid rotor system was designed. Now, this system incorporated a, uh, a way for the system to pivot. So here we had the mast, and then the blades attaching to the hub, as such. So now, um, this, is, this system, also known as a teetering or a seesaw system, incorporated a horizontal or a flapping hinge, and that was located right here. So the blades no longer absorbed the loads of flapping and therefore weren't as prone to failure. So this rotor system uh, could flap and feather for, or to compensate for dissymmetry of lift. So what did that look like? Let's say you wanted to put some kind of uh, cyclic input, the entire system would rock along that horizontal or that, that flapping hinge and allow the rotor system to absorb the stressors of flight instead of the blade bending up and down, putting the strain on the blade. So now the entire system could pivot along that horizontal joint. Um, however, this system is subject to mass bumping, which is where the mast and the rotor system um, can potentially make contact, usually during something like slope landings or low G flight and uh, potentially could have rotor separation if this impact was enough to sever the mast, make the entire rotor system uh, fly off. So that is one limitation of a semi-rigid rotor system. But the rotor system's constantly evol evolving engineers eventually developed a fully articulated rotor system. Now this system allowed each blade to flap and feather independently instead of all together on a, uh, a pivot point and it was able to overcome mass bumping. It also introduced the ability for blade hunting, that is the ability of blades to lead and lag. So what does that look like? We have the mast, we have the hub, and each blade given the ability to flap and feather independently of each other, no longer a seesaw joint. So it's able to compensate for the flapping and the feathering. And now, kind of looking down from the top, we can see how it has the compensation um, for blade hunting and we'll get into a little bit more of that. Now blade hunting is the ability for blades to to lead and lag. So why is that? Well due to the law of conservation of angular momentum also called Coriolis force as the blades flap up and their compensation for dissymmetry of lift the mass of the blade tends to shift inward so as the advancing blade flaps up the mass shifts inward the blade wants to accelerate. Well, this is putting stress on the blade if the blade is having to absorb it. So a fully articulated system gives that ability to have one more set of pivot points for the blades so that they can lead and lag and have some flexibility so the blades are no longer 
absorbing that stress of the Coriolis uh, force. So uh, kind of an example of that Coriolis force is imagine a spinning figure skater who brings her arms inwards, tends to speed up, and then bring her, brings her arms outward, tends to slow down. This is because of the mass is getting closer to the, the point of rotation and causes that speeding up and slowing down. So with a fully articulated system, we have this vertical hinge or the lead lag hinge, which allows these blades to kind of flex so that they're, uh, the blade itself isn't absorbing the stress of the Coriolis force. Now the rotor system is absorbing it, usually with a series of dampeners along that lead lag link. All right, so uh, this system uh, increased the reliability of the blades, increased the blade life, and allowed, once again, the ability for feathering plus flapping plus hunting. And I should have covered it earlier, but the semi-rigid allows for feathering plus flapping. So as you can see, each system adding a little bit more and more. Now there have been upgrades in all systems and all three systems are still seen today. Now the rigid system, uh, commonly used by the Red Bull BO105, which uses fiberglass uh, composite blades to kind of counter the uh, uh, what we talked about the tin can example, they're able to absorb a lot more stresses on the blades. Um, but this system itself is probably one of the most responsive and agile systems in the world. It just has the limitation of putting a lot of strain on the blades. But uh, the BO-105, the Red Bull helicopter can do it uh, and you know perform some of the most impressive helicopter stunts in the world with this rotor system. Uh, the semi-rigid design, probably the most prevalent system uh, by today's standards can be seen you know, in the earliest UH-1 Huey all the way up to the modern day Robinson R-22. And then your fully articulated system, usually seen on modern day military aircraft, uh, law enforcement aircraft, you know, things like the Apache, the Black Hawk, the Little Bird, uh, stuff like that. But rotor systems are always evolving, they're improving. Future designs are incorporating more and more composite materials to reduce the weight, improve performance, improve reliability of the rotor system. Uh, some systems, you know, even today are incorporating things like negative pitch into the blade so that you can really plant a helicopter down on the ground. You know, if you're, say, trying to land on a, a ship that's rolling on the waves and you want a lot of weight on the wheels, stuff like that. But that's, you know, that's kind of getting into the weeds of future helicopter design. But for now, uh, this covers the basic rotor system design. Be sure to hit like and subscribe below if you enjoy the video. Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. As always, safe flying.